everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth and I run the blog Life from the Viola section.com where I share my favorite practice tips, general advice, and tech for musicians. Today I want to talk about a couple of the best ways that you can prepare yourself for music school, whether you're planning to audition, if you've already auditioned and you're just kind of, you know, thinking like, how do I get ready for this new experience in my life? I think that these are going to be some of the best ways that you can prepare yourself for what music school is really like and for what you will be expected to know. This video and blog post will be best for you if you already basically know that you want to go into music school, if you somewhat have an idea of the career that you want to go into, and also if you have an idea of the instrument that you want to focus on. Um, generally in music school, you will really just focus on one instrument or your voice. I just kind of group voice into instrument, so whatever instrument you choose. And then, you know, sometimes you can have kind of like minor instruments and things like that. It depends on your degree, but generally you'll be focusing on one thing and that is your main focus in music school. So if you haven't already, I would suggest researching some schools, seeing what their programs are like, and seeing where you might best realistically fit in, maybe before watching this video or reading the post, but it won't hurt to watch this anyway. I think that you will just get the most out of it if you already have an idea of what kind of schools and programs you're going to be looking at. So the first and really best way that you could ever possibly prepare yourself for music school is by taking private lessons. So if you play for years and centuries now, many, many, if not most people have learned instruments through private lessons, one-on-one -on -one with a teacher who directly shows you how to place your fingers, how to read and understand music, and all of the concepts that you'll need to know. For whatever reason, learning music is just so much better when it's just one-on-one. -on -one. And of course, everyone has different opinions on this based on your personality and how you learn and everything, but I think for most people, generally, one-on-one -on -one private lessons are the best. That's why we do them so much. That's why we advertise them so much. So taking lessons will help you learn your instrument much faster than usually, like online videos or trying to teach yourself. If you have a teacher whose professional knowledge is all in the viola, you're gonna learn the viola faster than if you're trying to find the resources for yourself and understand how it works without someone there just with all the answers right for you. So the longer you take lessons, the better prepared you will likely be as long as you work hard and you know you put in your own work, then lessons are gonna help you learn faster. And the longer you take lessons, generally the more you learn and the more you're gonna be prepared. But again, you have to pull your own weight. Don't just rely on your teacher to teach you every single thing that you need to know. You need to put in the practice work every week to then you know learn new concepts and harder things and harder and harder and harder. When you're trying to get into a music school, 99% of the time you're going to have to complete an audition and a private teacher will help you choose your repertoire, learn your repertoire and, you know, really and really practice for that audition process. It's, you know, taking lessons is really something that you can't really replace with anything else. It's just so vital to going into music school. And most of the time, uh, at least depending on your major and depending on the schools, you will probably have to take private lessons for at least three years, if not all four, or you know, the entire length of your degree. If, you're, if you wanna be a performance major, private lessons are like the main basis of that. You're going to be taking lessons every single week for your entire degree. And I loved that. That was awesome and amazing. I loved my teacher and it was really great. But you know, having, having I guess, 13, 12 or 13 years of being in private lessons on different instruments, but you know, being in that environment for most of my life was so helpful in music school because I already knew how lessons worked. I knew the, I generally knew like a teacher's expectations and it's just really, again, something that you can't replace. The second thing you can do to really, really prepare for music school is to perform as often as you can. Most of us get nervous when we perform and that is a totally normal emotion and response to that environment. Performing can be stressful and just scary because playing music in front of people feels very, very vulnerable and that's just scary. It's a scary thing to just show emotion and to create things in front of other people who are listening and likely will be judging you. So the more often you can put yourself in performing situations, the better you're gonna know yourself and how you react under pressure and how you feel leading up to a performance and afterwards. The more that you do this, the more information that you have and the better you can kind of control your environment and understand how you can make yourself feel better and more comfortable when you're performing. 
Also, performing teaches you a lot about how to recover from mistakes and how to stay resilient, especially in your music making and even just being a person. If you ever want to do public speaking or something, or if you ever have to for a career, performing is going to really help you with that because you have to be so vulnerable in front of many, many people. I would personally much rather perform instead of do public speaking, even though I'm making a YouTube video and I don't know how many people are going to watch it, but you know, some of my videos have thousands of views and imagining myself talking in front of that many people at once is really, really scary. But in front of a camera, it's different. But either way, um, comparing performing in front of 100 people or speaking to a room full of 100 people, I would so much rather perform. Either way, <laughs> either way, I mean, I've performed in front of people way more than I've done like public speaking or speeches or anything. So you know, I'm more used to that. And that's exactly what I'm trying to say is the more that you perform, the better you're gonna feel about it or like the more comfortable you will get with it. If you want to go into a performance major, again, I know I keep talking about that, but that's what I did. So that's what I have the most experience with. If you wanna go into a performance major, you are going to have to perform a lot. You're, you know, if you are doing like a classical degree, classical performance degree, like I did, you'll have to perform solo for your recitals. You'll have to perform in chamber groups. You'll have to perform in orchestra. You might, you know, be involved with musical theater or opera. You might be in other ensembles that you need to perform for. I performed, I don't know if I want to say almost every weekend throughout college, but you know, if I averaged it out, it would probably be about a performance every weekend. It, it didn't quite fit that way on the calendar, but like, you know, if you averaged it out, it would probably work out that way. So I got really comfortable with performing in college because I was doing that so much and it was just became more and more and more routine. You just, you know, you can, you humans can kind of become used to almost anything and performing is no different you just get used to it after a while and you start to understand your feelings and know how you can make yourself feel better just like how you know if you have a bad day you know what tv show you might want to put on in the evening to help you feel better when you're performing and you feel really nervous you might know like what you have to do backstage to help yourself feel more confident or what you need to eat beforehand so that you don't feel sick while you're performing you learn those things about yourself as you go on and on and on. I do have a video for performance anxiety tips. I'll put that up in the eye and it will be linked in my blog post also. Be sure to check out my blog after you watch today's video because in my blogs, I sometimes go a little bit more in depth and I have links to other related things and I know that it will be really helpful for you. The third way that you can really help yourself prepare for music school is by learning a bit of music theory. I know the music theory may sound boring, <laughs> Um, and you know, it is like schoolwork. It might not be quite as fun as learning your instrument or playing the music that you really love, but learning a background of music theory is going to be helpful for many different reasons. The first one is that generally, if you're doing a music degree, you will have to take at least a couple music theory courses, if not many, and you will have to go very in depth in the subject. Having a basic knowledge when you go into college is going to be so helpful. First, you might be able to skip a level or at at least skip like a review level at the beginning and secondly it just gives you a leg up and makes things a little bit easier if you already have some knowledge so i think the music theory is really helpful if you're going into like a classical performance degree or a jazz degree especially if you're going into composition because you need to know the rules before you either use them or break them if you're going into like a commercial music degree where you might write some pop music or perform pop music you want to understand how chords work and how historically composers have written written things because it all, you know, all of music history, all of the genres, they kind of feed into each other because, you know, classical music does not exist in a vacuum, even though it feels that way from music history courses. I know I'm kind of getting off topic, but I want to talk about it. So advancements in classical music were being made in the 1900s while jazz music was happening. And, you know, Shostakovich was around when Elvis was around and they existed in the same world <laughs> at the same time. Totally different aspects of music, but, um, you know, maybe equally important. And it's, it's all interesting and it all feeds off of each other. I don't know if Shostakovich and Elvis knew of each other, but they existed at the same time, which like, it's so cool. Um, so anyway, no matter what genre of music you're going into, having an understanding of music theory, the rules of writing music and the structural, you know, background of music is very helpful. First, um, 
First, because you'll probably have to learn about it later. Second, because it can help you learn your instrument and any music that you want to learn easier. And third, it's good to stretch your mind. <laughs> Just sorry, that, that's my feeling. I know some things feel irrelevant, like, you know, I felt like learning really difficult math was irrelevant because I'm going to be a musician. Uh, it might have expanded my brain, which is good, but I definitely use music theory way more than I use long division. And to be honest, on the internet, I don't remember how to do long division on paper at all. I remember the symbol. I don't remember how it's supposed to work though, so... Uh, but music theory, I can tell you the structure of pieces, I can identify chords, I can write a melody in a soprano, alto, tenor, bass format. Uh, I could tutor music theory again if I had to. <laughs> but no, I use these things when I teach music to others. I use these things when I'm performing at a wedding gig. You know, if I were to lose my place in the music, I could kind of harmonize <laughs> along uh, until I find my spot. Not that that happens, but I could theoretically because I knew music theory. And something that I found to be so helpful is when I'm learning or teaching etudes. A lot of etudes are like built off of chords and arpeggios and they kind of go through cycles. So finding the chord progressions within an etude or even a piece of classical music and labeling what those are helps me kind of think about and internalize the notes a lot faster instead of thinking A flat, C, E flat, A flat, okay. Cool, I can find all of those on my viola. I think, oh, A flat major arpeggio, and then I can play it so much faster because I've practiced scales and arpeggios, which are also important. That goes along with lessons and practicing, but just understanding the theory behind it and the structure is so helpful for learning music fast. I promise it will be worth it. My fourth way to prepare for music school is to go to summer camps. So there are lots of music summer camps, ranging from tiny little local ones, maybe put on by your music teacher, to huge ones that are, have extensive audition processes and they might be international and you know really, really hard to get into. So there are all kinds of levels of music summer camps and I think they're all really valuable. So at a music summer camp, you can focus on harder music. You can meet like-minded young musicians who might have the same goals as you, might have the same kind of outlook and perspective on music, or you could meet others who have entirely different perspectives and you can learn from them. You can also learn from different teachers that you may have never met before otherwise, and you can try different types of music and ensembles than what you might experience at your school or in your local community. So I, I went to a a bunch of different summer camps, all different kinds of ranges and styles. And what I feel is directly most helpful for music school, they all were very helpful, but what I find to be directly helpful and what I want to talk about today is music summer camps that might be offered at schools that you're looking for. Maybe not offered by the school, but uh, the summer camp uses like the campus as their facilities. So I did this for one school, just one state school that I was looking at. I ended up auditioning and I got in, but I didn't go there. I went to a summer music camp there. I think it was hosted by the school, but you know, sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. But it was a great way to tour the school more in depth, get to know the music facilities, meet some of the teachers there and see what their teaching style is like, and also to try out the food on campus and just, you know, really get an idea of what going to school there might be like. It was a good time. I learned a lot. I got to meet new teachers. I did not work with the viola professor from that school, but I, I worked with her a different time anyway. But I did get to work with a violist from the New York Philharmonic, and that was a really valuable perspective for me, first of all, because I at that point I wanted to be an orchestra musician, and also he just had different perspectives from my private viola teacher, and it was really, really helpful for me to be challenged in my ideas and think, what do I like the best? What do I think is gonna work best for me? And also, you know, different perspectives, they challenge you, they help you grow, and it's really, really great. And then I came back to my teacher, got her thoughts on what he said, and, you know, had some other things to think about afterwards. A summer camp like this, or even just, you know, any other intensive music camp, might also show you a bit of what your schedule might be like as a music major. So at a lot of summer camps, especially like higher level ones, you'll have a full day of events. So you might have like a music theory class, some kind of like performing or piano class maybe. You have lessons in there, you'll have chamber coachings, orchestra rehearsals, the whole, the whole thing, and it's like a full day schedule. And that is really, really similar to what your schedule might be like in music school, especially if you're a performance major. But even if you're a different type of music major, 
you're gonna have a full day <laughs> no matter what it is. I know lots of people say like, oh, music majors, they, they just get to do nothing but practice all day. Yeah, we practice like all day, but we have classes and rehearsals and like seminars to go to and coachings and lessons and it sounds fun and it is fun. I promise it is really fun, <laughs> but it's a lot of work and a lot of those classes are like one credit hour. And so you are like overloaded because you have to have enough credit hours to stay full time, but so many of the classes are like low credit hour level things. Sorry, I might not be using the right terminology. So it's, it's a balance and it's really difficult. I mean it, I, I really mean it. <laughs> it's difficult, but fun and so rewarding. That's my outlook on it. I know that other people feel completely differently about music school and music school is not perfect, not at all. We could definitely redo some things way better than they currently are. But overall, looking back on it, I loved it and I'm very thankful for my experiences and they paid off for me. It doesn't for everyone and we'll get to careers a little bit later on in the video. Deciding to go to music school isn't something that you should take lightly. You have to really think it over and I recommend trying as many things as you can, as many, um, as many trial lessons, as many like shadow days and tours. Uh, go to performances if you can, or at least look them up online and, you know, see what the classes are like, see what the expectations are like, and you have to really, really internalize and think, is it going to be right for you? I don't know if I fully did that. I did do a lot of trial lessons and some shadow days and lots of tours. Um, and I knew that it's what I wanted to do, but I don't know if I thought it through as much as I should have. Not that I would have changed anything, but it's a huge decision and generally it's an expensive decision. So please try to be as rational and realistic as you can to, to hopefully put yourself on the right foot going into your adult life. That's a long conversation and a long topic and they're not easy decisions and it, it's scary, but I hope that that helps a little bit. My next way to prepare for music school is to play in as many ensembles as you can. So I firmly believe that the more you play, the more experience you're going to get and the more you're going to learn and the more you're going to grow. Even if the music that you make as you make more and more music has mistakes in it, even if you mess up, even if you have a bad experience, you're going to learn so much and you're just going to grow as a musician and as a person too. And I really, really love that about music. A really helpful way to get more music into your day and into your life and to just get more time on your instrument is by playing in a variety of different ensembles and I highly recommend checking out different genres of music and playing different styles of music. You never know what you might fall in love with music wise. Sometimes the thing that you're least expecting is going to be like your favorite piece ever and your favorite genre. And that's going to be like your new obsession, and what you really want to focus on. So keep an open mind and try lots of different ensembles. So if you don't know much about my background, I started on piano because my mom's a piano teacher, but I was always most interested in strings. So then I started violin. I kept doing piano, of course. Um, and then I heard a viola around when I was 11, I think. And that was that. I started viola lessons and I kept going on piano lessons. And those were my main instruments. But in school, we didn't have an orchestra program. So in school, starting from like the end of middle school and onwards, I did band. Uh, I did mallet percussion there because the keyboard is set up the same. So it wasn't like I had to learn how to play a wind instrument or anything. I just played mallet percussion and I was good to go. And throughout school, from elementary school to my senior year, I did choir as well. Um, I always liked singing. I don't sing in front of people now, <laughs> but um, I always enjoyed it and it was a way to be involved in music in school. I mostly just joined band because my friends were doing it and I wanted to be seen as a music person because I knew that music was what I wanted to go into. So being involved in it during the school day was how I could be really involved in music and show others that I'm a music person. <laughs> so here's kind of an overview of the ensembles that I was in. In school, I did regular like symphonic band. I did marching band. I did jazz band for a semester and I was awful at it. I did a bunch of different choirs, but I'll just count that as one. Um, and I did musical theater, sometimes in the chorus <laughs> or with a minor role and other times in the pit orchestra. I, outside of school, I was involved in youth orchestra, which was amazing. It was like the best experience I could have done, uh, throughout my school years. I also was in a small community orchestra, which was great. I got to kind of be more of a leader there and 
expand with different genres, which was really fun. Um, I also did community theater as well, both um, both pit orchestras for that and some acting just in plays. I'm an awful actor, but I'm glad I could be involved. Sometimes I would also play some incidental music for those plays and that would be like medieval slash renaissance music. When I started on violin, I did a lot of fiddle music in that beginner string orchestra. And then of course on piano, I didn't really do on any ensembles there, but I accompanied my choir a lot in school. So that's at least 11 ensembles and genres and kind of different sort of things that I was involved with. And being involved that much, first of all, kept me really, really busy, but all involved in music, which is what I knew that I wanted to do. And it was, you know, my biggest interest and what made me the happiest. And secondly, it kept me surrounded by music all the time, every single day, <laughs> at least every single weekday and every Saturday because of youth orchestra, I was involved in music. and just being surrounded by it helped me read it faster it helped me get better at my instrument um, and different instruments too since i was involved in different genres and different ensembles on different instruments and you know the more that you experience music the more that you're going to understand music the more you're going to get to know your instrument and you know the more that you can decide what you like and what you don't like if you're in different ensembles you can work with so many more teachers and directors than you might have ever had the opportunity to otherwise and every teacher and director is going to have a different perspective and different opinions on music and how to play instruments and you know they're going to have different backgrounds and different thoughts and feelings and it's so helpful to gain these different ex perspectives and i know i talked about that already a little bit but again it's just so helpful <laughs> um and I feel like I've had at least one major takeaway from every single teacher and director that I've ever worked with. And that is so valuable. It helps you become your own artist and develop your own opinions. Whether you agree with the teacher on something or you disagree, you are making your own thoughts and opinions. And once you are done working with that person, you're going to be different and you will be able to make your own musical decisions a lot better. And it just helps you grow so much. And it's great to meet new people also. Along with that, in music school, you'll probably be expected to play in a bunch of different ensembles and knowing how to juggle your time and balance your practice time between different things and just dealing with a busy schedule will help you prepare for what's expected in music school as well. Another way that you can really help yourself prepare for music school is by researching different music careers. There are so many different careers that you can have in music, whether that's the standard orchestra musician, or high school orchestra teacher or music therapist, you know, whether it's a more basic job like that or a freelance musician who also writes on the side or a teacher who also performs in pit orchestras, any kind of thing like that. A music career can be as basic or as varied or as um, kind of segmented over your life as you want or as you can really and no two music careers are ever going to really look the same everyone has a different experience and a different timeline and different things that they're interested in that they kind of go into so you can research the basic music careers you can see what people who do have music careers what their lives actually look like and what they really do you know if someone calls themselves an calls themselves an orchestra musician. They might not just be an orchestra musician. They also might do wedding gigs. They also might have a blog that they write on and make money from. They also might teach at a summer camp over the summer. And so they're an orchestra musician, but their career is so much more than that. So when you're thinking of going into a music career, be aware that music careers are not exactly linear and they're not just, I'm going to get a job at this place and this is that, and I'm going to stay there until I retire. It, it can be sometimes if you get a really good orchestra job and you're lucky and you just stay there. But oftentimes it'll be a little bit different and you have to kind of create your own career and find your own opportunities and make them yourself. And that's, that's not for the faint of heart, <laughs> definitely. Um, and not everyone does that. Some people are able to find the exact job that they want and stay there or stay there for like five or 10 years and then do something else. Everyone's career is very different. And I want you to be aware of that before you get in too deep and then get scared off by that thought. So if you can research careers, see what you like the best, what interests you, if anything sounds super exciting to you, look up day in the life vlogs of that career or any career that excites you really. 
and if you're lucky there will hopefully be like day in my life of a music teacher day in the life of a music therapist day in the life of a composer something like that you might be able to find either on youtube or on a blog or something and you can kind of see what their life is actually like what they do and maybe how they got there if you know anyone with a music career which i'm sure that you do if you are interested in music if you have a private teacher they have a music career if you have a band teacher they have a music career. If you have a composing teacher, they have a music career. <laughs> so um, you don't have to think like, who do I know who's in an orchestra? Take a look around you. If you are involved in music and you have some kind of teacher or director, they're a musician. So talk to them and see what their life is actually like, what their path was like, what they're interested in, how they might get there. And if you're interested in something that they don't do, see if they know anyone who does do that and see if they can put you in touch because you can learn really what a career is actually like and not just what the internet says this career might be because it's always different for everyone involved. Keep your mind open, brainstorm when you can, talk to your private teacher what ideas they have, or if you know they notice that you're good at a certain thing that, and that could be a career that you had no idea existed. Keep your mind open and just research and experiment, see what you might wanna do. And lots of people change perspectives and decide that they wanna do something different within college, after college, 50 years into their life, everybody changes. And that's okay, keep an open mind and really open yourself up to different possibilities. And that's one of the reasons why I suggest joining lots of ensembles because you can try on a lot of different hats and see what you like the best. And it might be something that you totally did not expect. Researching music careers can be exactly the same. My final tip to prepare yourself for music school is to listen to as much music as you can and as much different music as you can. So. It's very important when you're learning a piece of music to try to listen to it and kind of understand and hear the different nuances or different ways that you can play it. But it's also important to hear different recordings of your instrument, um, maybe find a favorite player of your instrument, and also to listen to different genres because you can be inspired by anything and you never know what path you might wanna go down. Exactly as I've been saying a lot with joining different ensembles and keeping an open mind, listening to different music can show you what you might be interested in down the road. An infinite number of things from any recording and video that you listen to of any good music in any genre, even bad recordings. <laughs> you can learn a lot from them too. You can learn what not to do. You don't want to think of listening to music as a learning experience every single time that you listen to something because that can become really boring. It can make you not enjoy listening to music, but you can turn any listening experience into a learning experience too by paying attention to artistic decisions, by paying attention to fingerings or bowings or phrasing. You can learn by a new genre or by a piece from somewhere else in the world that you've never heard of. Um, you can learn kind of characteristics of playing styles, different forms of music, and all different kinds of things. So listening to music is very valuable. And again, it's one of those things, the more that you listen to music, the more you're going to learn, the more experience you're going to have, the more kind of just subconscious knowledge that you're going to have about music. And that is so valuable and it's so helpful, even if you don't see the value in it right now. Later down the road, you might play something that like you've heard already, and that was helpful to you even five years ago and you didn't even know it. Listening to music just really helps you ingrain it better and just understand how music works a little bit more intimately. So I think that those are some of the best ways that you could possibly prepare yourself for music school. I'm sure that there are many other different ways that you can help also, like taking as many music electives as you can at school or um, traveling and seeing as many concerts as you can. Like there, there are so many different ways that you can prepare yourself. But based on my experience, I think that these are things that I had done that really helped me. And a couple of them are things I wish I had done more of or done at all that would have really helped prepare me later on. So if you found this helpful, please let me know down below. Or if you have your own tips, something that helped you or something that you think might help others, please let us know down below because you could help out so many different people with your comment. Be sure to check out the blog post if you'd like to learn more and if you'd like related links. That is always down in the description box and it is lifefromtheviolasection.com. Thank you again for watching and I will see you again in two weeks. Mm -hmm.